<laughs> Bryce, um, next Sunday I am going to, uh, and Laura, I'm going to ask Nora what a honeymoon is. So, <laughs> I intend for you to explain that very well to her. If you have forgotten what that means, talk to Noah and Ellen. I love that time. <laughs> the whole universe, from a newborn baby's cry to uh, the wonderful uh, reaches of the cosmos, reflects the evolving creativity of God. We are all a part of God's holy adventure, each one of us. Each life has a unique place in God's universe. You have to believe that. You have to believe. Our life isn't determined fully by God, even though maybe some think it is. It's not determined by anyone else. But neither is our life random or accidental. Our life fits into this bigger picture. Our individual lives are shaped by many factors. Our lives are shaped through the interplay of all the previous decisions and choices that we have made from the time we are born until the present time. Our life is determined by our family of origin and the DNA that gave us life. It's shaped by the environment that we grew up in and are a part of, and the culture in which we live. And within each of these influences, God is, work, is at work to give us a vision of what we fully can be, even though probably we can only catch just a glimpse of that vision. Traditional religious language says that each of us has a vocation or a calling which is the primary goal of life. When we discover our calling, it's not only about what we truly become as an individual, but it's also about what we contribute to the universe, to the community and the world, the planet and the environment, and to others around us. It's about living God's dream in this very unique way. Call. That's the word I want you to focus on for the rest of this time. As this new year unfolds, I think each one of us has this strong desire of a divine call, meaning to go deeper in faith, to discover how to live God's dream in this wonderfully unique way. This call contains the prospect of further growth, growth in ourselves as individuals filled with meaning and purpose, growth in our relationships with those we love, those we work with, play with, go to church with, growth in wisdom, learning and exploring our world, and new ideas, and making new discoveries all the time. It means growth in faith, deepening our relationship with Jesus Christ, learning more about other faiths, and, and things that we have in common. It means growth in service, discovering new ways that we assist God in the healing of this world. We can experience a call at any day, in any day, and at any stage of our life. By calling us, God says to us, you are seen and you are known and you are loved. Isn't that what each of us desires? 
the ability to be seen, the ability to be known, and especially the ability to be loved. In today's reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus calls his first two disciples. This call story is different from Matthew, uh, Luke, and Mark's. In this story, the first two disciples that are called are Andrew and his brother Simon. Andrew and Simon Peter are fishermen on the Sea of Galilee. And they are called uh, by Jesus to come and follow. They are drawn to this one called Jesus, who will bring change in their lives forever. Like Andrew and Simon Peter, if we feel called to follow Jesus, whom we call Christ, then I think we ought to be somewhat clear in our head and in our heart about who it is or the identity of the one in which we choose to follow. That's the key. What is the identity? of the one we are called to follow. This is one of the purposes that the Gospel of John was written. To help the early community understand the identity of Jesus and the call to discipleship. There are two, uh, there, these are the two faith issues that the entire Gospel will deal with. In verse 35 of today's lesson in chapter 1, we find John the Baptist and two of his disciples, Andrew and Simon Peter, standing by when Jesus passes within sight. And John the Baptist identifies Jesus with the words, Look, here is the Lamb of God. Lamb of God will be the first of many titles given to Jesus in the next 16 verses of this chapter. There are like 10 titles given to Jesus in the next 16 verses. And so right at the beginning of this gospel, John wants his readers or his community to understand the identity of the one it is that they are called to follow. Why would Jesus be called Lamb of God? Well, lamb in ancient Judaism would have something to do with sacrificial service. And so right off the bat, the identity of Jesus is wrapped up in sacrifice, lamb of God. John's disciples turn and follow Jesus. And Jesus says to Andrew and Simon, what are you looking for? It's an important question. It's an important question to the readers of John's Gospel. It's an important question for us. What are you looking for when you come to church each Sunday? These are the very first words that Jesus speaks in this Gospel. What are you looking for? They become words that Jesus will address to everyone. In every time who would follow him, including us. And Jesus says to us, Church, what are you looking for? How would we answer? Well, some of us might say, We're looking for eternal life. Some of us might say, Maybe a little bit of wisdom for our daily journey. Others would say, I'm looking for meaning and purpose in my life. Lots of people come to church asking that question. Some of us would maybe perhaps say, we're looking for rewards for being a good person, for following the commandments of Moses and the attitudes of Jesus. Some people come looking for a miracle, a, a healing. Some people come looking for a life that's free of hurt and disappointment. We all come looking for different things in this community we call church. 
And so as we read on in the Gospel of John, Jesus invites us to come and see, like Andrew and John, come and see. And Jesus invites us to go to the deeper questions. In the restless world of first century Galilee and Judea, the disciples who went after Jesus were indeed looking for something. John the Baptist moved among, moved among the people in this restless world, proclaiming that a new age was breaking forth. And he called people to repentance. Come to the water, come to the Jordan. Step in the Jordan and be immersed in the waters of baptism. It's a way of turning a life in a new direction. It's a symbol of the coming new age of God. That things will no longer be the way they were. They will be different. It was a call to repentance. John the Baptist promised people that gathered on the banks of the Jordan River that one day God would act in one who was promised to come. And that day, in this lesson, it arrived. And John says, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This passage tells us that repentance and forgiveness of sin was a part of the new age. I wish more people in our world today would take that to heart. I wish all the people that we see in our social networks would stop for just a moment, stop talking, and listen. To listen to the world of cosmos. To understand that turning in a new direction, speaking a different language, a language of love rather than hate and division, would bring or usher in a new world faster. God calls us to live by forgiveness, and forgiveness is a form of divine healing. And as we embrace forgiveness in our lives, our memories and our actions, our lives are transformed and made whole. We must believe that. We must believe the necessity of forgiveness is a way of healing and transformation. And so Jesus says to us at the beginning of this year, what are you looking for, church? Who is Jesus for you? How do we identify and claim our call to follow Jesus? I think it's one of the reasons that we come back to Bethany Christian Church week after week, because here is a place to just breathe for a moment, to seek and to search and to ask questions. Here's a place to entertain new answers to age-old questions. Here is a place to begin living in a new direction, a transformation from the old life to the new life. It's about call. It is about call. And how God calls us and claims us and sends us out into the world to be messengers of God's love. That is indeed why we are called. We invite you on the journey. You are on the journey. Today we invite you to consider your call and how you will continue to live.